Let's do some more probability. Uh, this is another empirical example. A domino is tossed 500 times. Let's say it lands on its flat side 400 times. It lands on an edge side 75 times. And lands on an inside 25 times. Then we could assign the empirical probabilities as this. 400 out of 500 would give us a probability of 0.8 except for the flat side. For the edge side, 75 out of 500 give us a probability of 0.15. And then for the inside, 25 out of 500 would give us a 0.05. And again, notice that these add up to 1. Another example would be if you took a six-sided die and tossed it 6,000 times. And suppose each number appeared as below. So let's say 1,057 times you got a 1. So if you take 1,057 and divide it by 6,000, that's 0 0.176. Let's say you got a 2, 922, so take 922 and divide it by 6,000, and you get 0.154. And then you got a 3, 911 times, so divide that by 6,000, you get 0 0.152, 152, and then divide 445 by 1,000, and you get 0 0.074. And then divide uh, this number, 2562 by 6,000, and you get 0.427, and then finally divide 103 by 6,000, and you get 0.017. Now, some of these numbers are close. If you remember, the probability of a die should be about 1 6, which roughly is 0.17. So this one, 0.176, is fairly, is real close. 0.15 is not too far off. Same thing here. But these other three are actually you know, pretty far off from what they should be. So we would probably suspect that this die is not a fair die based on these probabilities. Let's look at a couple of theoretical probability problems. Suppose we toss three fair coins, and let's find the probability of getting all heads, two heads and one tail, and no heads. Okay, well this can actually be done uh, by looking at the sample space. And I noticed here, this sample space is wrong. Let me fix this, because this one should say tail, tail, tail. So let me fix that real quick. Okay, so now the sample space is correct. It's got all eight possibilities with the tossing of your three coins. And so the event of all heads would be just the one possibility. So the probability of that, we would say one out of eight, because we're going to assume each one of these is equally likely to occur. Now, the event of two heads and one tail, there's three ways that can happen. Head, head, tail, head, tail, head, or tail, head, head. And so that would be three ways out of eight, so that probability would be three-eighths. And then the event of no heads, that would mean that you get all tails. And again, there's only one way that can happen, so that would be one-eighth. Okay, let's look at a different experiment. Suppose three cards are drawn from a standard deck of cards and we're going to find the probabilities below and we will assume that each simple event, each three card hand, is equally likely to occur, to occur and you know that the number in the sample space is 22,100 because the way you would do that by the way if, if you forgot how you would just do 52C3 and then that would give you, that combination would give you 22,100. Now, the event of getting two face cards and one non-face card. Okay, well let's find out the number of ways this could happen. Now there are 12 face cards in a deck, so make sure you're aware of that. So, out of the 12 face cards, you would want to choose two. And then, you would have to choose out of the other 40 cards, the ones that are not face cards, you'd have to choose one. So you would multiply these two combinations together and get 2,640, and then divide that by the total combinations, 22,100, and get a probability of 0.1195. The next event is the event of getting all kings. Well, in that case, out of the four kings, you'd want to choose three, three kings, and then out of the 48 cards that are not kings, you're going to choose none from there. Now, you really don't need this 48 choose 0 because it just equals 1, but I like to put it there so you can see that we're not choosing any, any other cards. 
So that's actually going to be 4 out of 22,100. So that probability is 0 0.00018. And then the event of getting two kings and one jack. Well, then out of the four kings, you would want to choose two. And out of the four jacks, you would want to choose one. And so that's 24 possibilities, which would be 24 out of 22,100 or 0 0.001. And then the event of two hearts and one diamond, that would be out of the 13 hearts, you want to choose two. And out of the 13 diamonds, you want to choose one. And so multiply those together, you get 1,014. Divide that by 22,100, and you get 0 0.0459. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have a basket of seven good apples and five bad apples, and we randomly select four apples. What's the probability of getting exactly three good apples? Now that would mean we got three good apples and one bad apple. So first of all, let's calculate the number of ways to get three good apples and one bad. That would mean out of the seven bad apples, we'd have to choose three. I'm sorry, the seven good apples, we'd choose three. And out of the five bad apples, we'd choose one. And then multiply those two operations together, and we get 175 ways to choose three good apples and one bad apple. And now let's calculate the total number of apple samples we can take. We know there's 12 total apples, and we're going to choose 4. So if we calculate 12, choose 4, that tells me that there's 495 selections of the 4 apples. So now the probability of this event would be 175 out of 495, which reduces to 35 over 99, or 0.354. What about exactly 4 good apples? Well, four good apples will be four good apples and no bad apples. So out of the seven good apples, we choose four. And out of the five bad apples, we choose none. And again, you don't even have to use this because it equals one. And then that's 35. And then we divide 35 by 495, which reduces to 7 over 99, or 0 0.071. What about no good apples? Well, the probability of that would mean I get zero good apples and four bad apples. Well, that would mean out of the good apples, I choose none. And out of the five bad apples, I choose four. And there's five ways that can happen. So five out of 495 would be one out of 99, which is 0 0.01. And then exactly five good apples. Well, that one's not possible because since you, you're only choosing four apples, there's no way you can get five uh, good apples. So that would be, that probability would have to be zero. Now, at least three good apples would mean that you have to calculate the probability of getting three good apples and one bad, or four good apples and no bad apples. So all we have to do there is add the two probabilities together. So up here, we know there's 175 ways to get three good apples and one bad, and there's 35 ways to get four good apples and zero bad. So add those together, and we get 210 ways to get this event. And we divide it by 495 to get the probability, and we reduce it to 14 out of 33, or we can write it as a decimal, 0 .0 of 0.424. So like I said, sometimes um, something like 5 choose 0, you don't really have to write it, but, but I like to write it just to show you that we're selecting none of that particular type. Okay, so I'll show you a set of practice problems in the next video on probability.